Welcome back YouTube, VST here, Valence PC Tech and today we are going to test if disabling RAM Plus on my Samsung S22 Ultra will actually improve its performance. I stumbled upon a Twitter thread where people are claiming that disabling the RAM Plus on their S22 Ultras really improve performance and even some claim battery life. Before we dive deep into the test, we need to do some explanations here. So what is RAM Plus exactly doing? Nothing more, nothing less, but just like a swap file. So if you have an old computer, a modern computer, a Windows computer, well, even a Linux computer, right? Yeah, you're gonna have a swap file. So what does this mean, guys? If you don't know what a swap file is, I will explain. And what you can do, if you like videos like this, just subscribe to this channel, guys, and yeah, pay attention. So the swap file actually takes information from your system RAM memory and puts it on your hard drive. It could be a solid state like SSD, like a normal drive, like magnetical type of drives. This allows the computer to really use more memory, right? But there is some caveats, guys, and the idea is that usually your hard drives is going to be slower than your RAM. Right, so if you try to use more memory by using a swap file where your computer can process more information, this is going to be the caveat. So you're going to get the idea and the looks of having more RAM, but of course it's going to be a bit slower. Now the interesting point with the S20 Ultra is that it comes already with 12 gigabytes of RAM. Not all of them, right? Mine does. So what I'm going to do in this video, guys, I'm going to do some basic benchmarks on RAM speed with the RAM Plus on and off, and then I'm going to render a 4K video with CapCut just to see if it's really faster. And again, if you like videos like this, don't forget to subscribe for the channel, buckle up and let's start. All right, now back on my review desk. Please don't bother the mess. That's kind of like what a YouTuber desk looks like. So some things to review. This review coming very soon and yeah, some other things here as well. Don't pay attention. Now the first thing is first guys, we have to go inside settings, all right? Scroll down to battery and device care. When inside, click on the memory tab and then just see here. We have something called the RAM Plus. All right, so RAM Plus uses your phone's storage space to provide virtual memory. Choose more virtual memory to allow more apps to stay open in the background. And by the way, guys, in the previous One UI 4.11, this option was there, but you were not able to just turn it off and on. Now, of course, you can. What I'm gonna do as part of this video, guys, I'm going to test the standard setup for G. So I have 12 gigabytes of physical RAM and then 4G of my storage used as a RAM. So I'm gonna do two main things. The first is to run a CBDT cross-platform test, guys, on this unit so that we are really able to see the timings. So here we have the sequential write, four megabytes, all right? We have the sequential read, and there is also a bit more. Then I'm going to open CapCut and render a 4K 60 FPS video to 4K 60 FPS and just see how long it's gonna take. We're gonna do this now using the four gigabytes additional virtual RAM, then turn this off, restart my phone, do the same test guys, and see if it actually matters. So, because you know, I believe if everything that we can read on Twitter and Reddit is true, I should be able to see at least some improvement. If not, then I'm just gonna call this a placebo. All right, guys, so I'm gonna do a screenshot of this, and this is the timing that we get right now. The next text is gonna be opening CapCut. I loaded a 4K 60 FPS 40 second video inside my CapCut, guys, and what I'm gonna do, I'm going to try to re render it again on 4K using 60 FPS. And um, we're just gonna see how long it's gonna take. I'm gonna use this iPhone here as a stopwatch and we're just gonna see how long it's gonna take. So I have to be very, very careful to just hit this very, very correctly. All right, yep, I think I did. Export started, all right. File is 200 something megabytes, guys, so it's not going to fly, of course, but okay. Yeah, I think it's gonna be at least 30 seconds, probably even more. It's very interesting to see if we are able to do that quicker, faster, on the second test where virtual RAM is gonna be disabled. All right, good. So, okay, yeah, even more than 40 seconds. I think more than 40 seconds, probably even up to a minute, guys. Okay, let's just see. Exporting, or right, if you're very close, I'm gonna prepare to hit the stop button when we reach 100%. Okay, we are, okay, yeah, almost, all right, 42 seconds, guys. 
42 seconds, okay. Now, what I'm gonna do, guys, I am gonna go back inside my settings. I'm going to turn the virtual RAM and I'm going to pretty much redo the same test. If I don't see any huge or even tiny, right, advantage, then I'll say that this is nothing less, nothing more but a placebo. Restarting my phone. Phone has been restarted. It, by the way, took a while and also my apps were optimized. So it really was like a not so quick restart. Usually it's, it's a bit faster. So I really guess that turning off the virtual RAM is really causing some things on the background. So probably the swap file has been deleted and etc. So I will wait a bit for the whole system to start. And in the meantime, I'll just go back inside my settings, scroll down to device care and just want to make sure that we are really rid of this. So let's go into memory, check in the memory guys. And if I click the RAM plus, we can just see that the RAM plus has been now fully turned off. And without any further ado guys, I see my S Pen is also operational. I am going to start the next CPDT test on the RAM and the storage. All right, Garmin Connect also in case. So we are now all set testing. Okay, that's the sequential right. I even have a feeling that it's taken a bit longer, but I'm not so sure about the speed. They probably probably are higher, but I, okay, I cannot recall the first test. Um, I did a screenshot, so we'll have to compare. All right, that's the random write, and now we have the random read. And again, guys, the main test for me is going to be CapCut because all these benchmarks, you know, I have like a special opinion on them. But this here is not like the usual Anti2 or Geekbench stuff. So it's really using some real information to process the data, to read it and write it and etc. All right, uh, that's the final result, guys. I'm going to take a screenshot and now let's do a comparison. This was the test with the RAM Plus. So sequential write was 188. Uh, okay, let's just see. 202, so okay, it's better. The sequential read was 401 megabytes. <laughs> the sequential read here with the virtual RAM on was actually higher. Then we have random write 19, okay? Here we have 8, so it seems to be slower, right? And also I think the random read is 14 versus 9. And the memory copy, guys, here for almost like 6 gigabits and here it's higher. So it seems with the virtual RAM it's higher, but then again, this is just a test. So just a benchmark. Now let's open CapCut and I will now redo the same project. So I will open it, I will go here, I'll choose all the setting and now let's turn the stopwatch because I really believe that this is going to be really a better indication. I have reset my stopwatch. Remember it was 42.60 and now it's very interesting. I have to be very accurate again. So let me hold my breath. Okay. I think we did that one. All right. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Is this now going to take more than 42 seconds or less? Now, remember, we are doing this test without using the help of the virtual RAM, which means no storage is used as memory, right? And I think that's a good test because this is a huge file, right? Also, it uses compute power to process all of that. So it uses your CPU. It's going to use also the storage. So it's pretty much a very nice and valid test, or at least that's what I believe. And now I think it's going to get very, very close, guys. Oh, oh my God. All right. Yeah. Okay. And stop. 45 seconds, guys. All right. So what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. It seems that without using the virtual RAM, Things like rendering a 4K movie, 60 FPS, and even doing a storage and run test are not yeah, that great. So is this placebo? I think, yeah. And will it have impact on the battery life? I will still have to test, but at the end of the day, guys, this is what you see on the screen. So please, you and your family, stay safe, guys. Subscribe to the channel. And let's meet in one of my next videos. And with that said, VST over and bye.